one of my very favorite places to visit is the Los Angeles Repository of Low Art in, in Los Angeles. Well, this is a lovely example of low art, isn't it? And low morals, too. It's, it's a picture of a seduction of a young lady on, on a, a steamship, it seems, and she's being seduced by possibly the captain or, or the first officer. If we look at the hand that's resting on, on the back of her deck chair, she's wearing a wedding ring, isn't he? What a scoundrel! But something else is going on in this picture that makes it rather exciting. He's giving us, the viewer, who are complicit in his seduction, a signal, isn't he, with his other hand. This, this long, straight, protruding finger that's resting on his cheekbone. It's a signal, isn't it? He's saying, hold on a second there, matey, and I'll have this young filly on the back quicker than you can say Jack Robinson. Yes. But who's he saying it to? Is it just us, the viewer? I don't think so. But there's someone else who's also involved in this seduction, which turned it into a ménage à trois. And that's possibly the first mate. And if we look down at the young lady's feet, we see they aren't there. Which is very odd, because this particular artist loved painting feet. Well, he loved feet, and, um, and they're not there. And one imagines that the first mate is, is off off the canvas at the young lady's feet and he's possibly taken her shoes off and, and her stockings and he's caressing her feet, possibly licking them. And, and if, 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 if the artist had shown that in the picture, of course, he would have been drummed out of the art academy and thrown into jail, possibly. Um, but he, he didn't show it because it was not allowed. But we know it's going on and that explains the sad little look on her face. One imagines her saying to herself, Oh, well... I'm all alone, heading off to convent school. Mummy and Daddy are not with me. What can I do? I'm just a young girl on my own. Oh, dear, dear, dear. How sad she must feel. This is a rather interesting example of American primitive carving. It's called Judy, the artist's lover. And she looks like a rather happy young woman, doesn't she? And, uh, it's almost as if she's saying, look at me, I'm, I'm young, I'm beautiful, and, um, and I've got my whole life ahead of me. But I don't really see that. Look at her face. This isn't really a happy smile, is it? And those eyes aren't full of life, they're full of pain. And that, that smile is more as if she's gnashing her teeth in agony. Why would, why would she be gnashing her teeth and be uh, shocked, surprised and angry? Well, I think I know. If we look at this carving closely, we see a very important feature, or two important features, and these enormous torpedo-like breasts coming out of the carving towards the viewer. I mean, they're quite enormous. They're, they're very big and fleshy and round, and, um, and, and, and they're, they're just stuck there. And one wonders if they were not imposed on the young lady, if these breasts were not um, uh, enhancements uh, that the young lady was forced to uh, procure on behalf of her lover, the artist, to make him happy. And, and this isn't really a young woman saying, oh, look at me, I'm so beautiful, but oh, look at me, I'm in pain. I'm, I'm, I'm having to do these awful things to my body to conform to male ideas of beauty. I'm in such pain. Oh, God, help me. And, and it's a rather cruel painting and, and, and a lot of conflict, I think, because look at her feet. Well, they're, they're pointing in one direction, but her breasts are pointing in a completely other direction. There's a lot of conflict here. Lot of conflict. I try to keep myself out of my appraisal of art, but I don't know how possible that is.
And this is called My Other Self. And it, and it shows a man's clothes, very fastidiously uh, draped over a chair in a bedroom, doesn't it? Uh, the pants laid across the seat of the chair, the jacket hanging on the back and the shoes underneath. But it's very strange because it's daylight in the room. Why would someone take their clothes off in daylight, one wonders? Normally one would think, oh, he's, he's in bed, possibly, or he's changed into some you know, casual slacks and loafers. But I don't think so. Why would someone take their clothes off? Well, obviously, he was about to do something that was going to disturb the clothes, maybe perhaps dirty them. Perhaps he came home and the dinner was cold, or, or perhaps he came home and the dinner wasn't even ready, or it was a wrong dinner. Perhaps he wanted pork and beans and he got fish and chips instead. And he's very angry and he takes his clothes off and he goes to the kitchen and gets a big butcher knife and he's in the other room, isn't he? He's slashing away, slashing away at his poor wife who, who didn't know that today he wanted pork and beans and not fish and chips. Blind Lemon Jefferson song. <laughs>